Welcome once again to Inside LAFC. I am Max Predos. Here we are joined by Bob Bradley. And Bob, we'd love to talk about the team, but obviously the World Cup going on. And I'd love to get your thoughts about what you and your team reacted to when Carlos Vela and Mexico were able to move on to the next stage. We all were watching both games, and obviously there was a lot of tension. Mexico benefited from uh, South Korea coming through, and a German team that never really uh, worked out in this World Cup. But uh, it's all about getting out of the group and, and giving yourself a chance. So uh, it doesn't always uh, happen that, that you finish on the highest note, and they didn't. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I was. I sent a message to Carlos. I haven't done the research, but uh, I'm not sure that I can remember any team that beat Germany and Brazil in the same World Cup. <laughs> and so if that's true, Mexico has a, has a chance to make some history, for sure. You like their chances? Uh, I, I think this Mexican team still uh, is exciting. Uh, I think they've got some dangerous attackers, Carlos being the main one. Uh, even in the, the last game against Sweden, Carlos came inside a few times, had a couple of opportunities to shoot with his left foot. Just missed. Uh, maybe this time around they're going in. Right, they're logging a lot of minutes for Carlos Vela. We'll, we'll, we'll welcome him back with open arms here for LAFC, who have a game at home against Philadelphia Union, a team that's struggled a bit lately, but coming off a big win over their last game. Uh, what are your expectations for this matchup over on Saturday? Uh, I think overall Philadelphia's had a, a good run of late. Uh, you know, they had a good win against Red Bull in the Open Cup. And I see the team improving. So uh, I know Jim Curtin. I coached him with the fire. Uh, his teams have a good way of playing football. Um, you know, Mike Sorber, who's here with us, uh, was on Jim's staff for a few years. So we certainly know the work they put in. And, and we always go back to the things that we try to do every game in terms of finding the right way to play from the back, um, the kind of movements going forward, uh, our ability to control games. I think we saw some really good things against Columbus, and hopefully we can build on it. Catching the Union when they're playing well, obviously a 4-0 win over the Vancouver Whitecaps, so this is a team really poised to maybe get that victory here at Bank of California Stadium. And that brings me up to the next question, because you have a game up against the Dynamo shortly thereafter, a few days Tuesday. So what's the dynamic from your perspective to get ready from one game to the next and balance that? Um, yes, we have a tough stretch of, of three games uh, coming up. We're you know, home Philadelphia at Houston and then home Orlando. And, and so we'll need to rotate a little bit. But for now, our first thought is build on Columbus, get uh, a strong group on the field, play our football, go for three points at home, and then uh, assess everything after the match. What do you think about Stephen Betashore as a, uh, you know, an analyst, a pundit? Do you think he has what it takes? Steve's a smart guy. Has he been doing some uh, outside work? Yeah, a little bit. A little okay. bit here on our Inside LAFC show. So Very good. He's actually done another little piece for us. Maybe you can watch it when we're, when we're all said and done here. Uh, not a problem. <laughs> Steven Betashore, now a weekly correspondent for us, talking with Jordan Harvey. Thanks, Max. I'm here with Jordan Harvey, and uh, this is my million dollar set you guys uh, set up for me. I hope you guys uh, enjoy it. And uh, yeah, we got a couple questions, and. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and start off. Thanks for being here, first of all. Yeah, is this segment called Beta Time? <laughs> this is the, the Beta Time beta right time, here. Beta Time, the infamous Beta Time. <laughs> Only the players in the locker room know. Inside joke, you'll, uh, you'll hear more about it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so let's go back to Saturday. And uh, I think a special moment for you, walking out with Harlow, uh, you know, how did it feel? Um, it was awesome. Um, I've missed the opportunity a couple times in the, in the last couple years since she's been born, and so, um, this opportunity presented itself. Uh, Jeff uh, brought it to me, our uh, team administrator, and and it worked out perfectly with the Columbus game, with it being Women's Night. I know Mia Hamm came out before the game, so that was really cool. Um, and then walking out with her, just a special moment. It's something, um, you know, as a defender, I don't have a lot of accomplishments, but my daughter is definitely one of them. And uh, walking out with her was something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Yeah, and did, did she behave herself? Did she uh, enjoy it now? <laughs> she behaved herself, but she was like, I was trying to distract her the entire time. I was like, look, Beta's up there. So wave to Beta, wave to Walker. Um, but she just wanted mom at yeah. the end of the day, and that's all she said. And then um, mom was on the sidelines, so then she saw mom, started crying. I don't know if she's on the jumbotron crying, but um, yeah, it was, it was, it, it worked out. It was uh, something that we can laugh about when she gets a little older. We got uh, a couple opportunities with LAFC, and uh, one of the things that we both did was we went on James Corden. So uh, you know, kind of going back to that moment and uh, that 
opportunity that we had with him. What were your thoughts on that, and who do you think would be the best maybe late night uh, host? <laughs> Um, I think the most entertaining would be Benny, but he would probably be kicked off the air pretty quickly. Um, and then, oh man, probably Laurent would be pretty good late night. Um, but yeah, I mean, going back to that experience, it was really cool. Not just uh, going on the show, but then doing the soccer bit um, weeks before. That feels like a year ago, by the way. Um, but yeah, uh, when Will Ferrell, like, tries to get you on the show with James Corden, you're like, oh my God, this is surreal. And so just meeting Will and then James and being on the show was really cool. And I just, we, we did the bit where we shot it at James Corden. I was just trying to like not miss the target. I know we made oh, yeah. this side bet before we went on. We we're like, if anybody misses, they're bringing coffees the next day. So nobody missed, which was uh, kind of the ultimate goal there. But that was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, that was definitely fun. And I was shocked when, uh, when Will hit the target. Like legit, <laughs> first try. <laughs> I was impressed. Put a lot of pressure on us though yeah. afterwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the coffees at that point were like, oh, who like, cares oh about coffee? God, got- <laughs> Our owner's hitting the target. We're like, all right, pressure's on now. That was cool though. Um, so I know outside of soccer, I know you well, and something that you enjoy doing is playing the guitar. So for you, you guys out there, you didn't know he's quite the guitar player. Uh, what kind of music do you like to play? First off, I'm like <laughs> such a, a wannabe a musician. It's not even funny. And I'm not a great guitar player, but if I go on YouTube, YouTube is an amazing uh, teacher. Um, I can learn pretty much anything. So um, I like playing a lot of Jack Johnson, Ben Harper, just the acoustic stuff that I grew up listening to. And then um, anything my wife will sing to um, is what I'll play because um, I have no voice whatsoever. And so uh, any of my um, flaws, guitar-wise, she makes up for with her voice. Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing she's got a good voice. Cause, yeah, the guitar, no, I'm just kidding, you're a good player. <laughs> um, all right, we'll take you away from uh, the guitar playing, but let's go one question about soccer. Uh, we got the Philadelphia Union coming up. Serious? Um, we're going to Bank of California, where we love to play, obviously. We got a good little record there. We try to keep that going. What can the fans expect to see from us? I think more the same. Um, at home, we're going to attack teams. And, um, you know, looking at Philly, they've got a lot of dangerous players. I think they've won a couple games in a row now, playing with a lot of confidence. They won their last game 4-0 against Vancouver. Um, so I'm assuming they'll be coming in with the same lineup. Um, you know, as a, a defender, you kind of look at the player you're going to be going up against. and so. Uh, in particular, watching that game, I, I paid attention to Ilsenio, who's a really crafty player on the dribble, really good feet, so that's something that um, we'll have to be aware of. Um, and then Sapong, just powerful up top. But um, the good thing about this club and about Bob is that we really focus on ourselves. And I've been on clubs where we adjust to a team. Um, but this club, this LAFC, we're really on the front foot, um, putting pressure on teams, really trying to control the game, which I love. And it's something that uh, we'll do game in, game out, and that's going to be no different against Philly. We're here on the outskirts of Los Angeles, proper downtown, just above the 110 freeway where the streets are no longer called by names and by all of a sudden numbers. But it's quiet out here, but if we get a little bit closer, we get into a bunker. And inside is the association. It's a combination of people in apparel, music, food, drink, fashion, all together. And they're getting their best players to come and play inside on futsal court. You're not going to believe what's going on in there. All right, Ben Hooper, Curtis Brown, put this together, the association. I've taken a walk that you should be very proud. I know I know Ben a little longer, so I'll ask him. How did this all start? It was just an idea to create something in LA that celebrated soccer on and off the field. I'll celebrate art and music and culture and oh. fashion and how to bring it all into one space where people are playing, but also celebrating all those other elements as well. I think it's really something new for football in the US. I think that's the best part about it. There's a lot of things that people don't understand about the sport. There's angles that people don't see it in. And I think this is a perspective that people get to see the game in a different light. I saw you warming up here and you're like locked in. Yeah. I mean, there's a DJ spinning, there's drinks being had, there's kids kicking ball, and you're locked in because you're yeah. you're ready to play. I am, yeah. I feel like you have to be. Yeah, what is the level of play here? I mean, I've watched a couple games. It's, uh, it's 
pretty impressive. It varies, right? So you get a little bit of everything, which is nice. What else do you like? What do you enjoy about coming here on Thursdays? Uh, so, so I played in Europe back in the day. I'm telling you, the level's yeah. good. Right, the, the finals in July. Yes. And then we're looking at all -star game. an all-star game and possibly a season two later this year. And, and part of the idea, too, is that there's always an event in L.A. once a week, soccer-related, that you can go to. The Association, a pretty cool event that will be running through July. So you've seen many times on our, our video content here, Lawrence Simon's free kick. It's been a montage of how the season has gone. But it was a bit of an unexpected result that this was something LAFC could rely upon. And his teammates, well, they certainly appreciate it. We caught up with some of them to talk about what Laurent Simon brings to the set pieces. What will Simon do? He's got a, a fantastic way of sizing up the opportunity. When we see him lining up, uh, we have a good idea what he's about to do. Simon steps up with the right foot, takes the shot. And in! What a shot from Laurent Simon! What he does well is uh, he puts most of them on frame. And when it knuckles like that, even if it doesn't go in, um, you know, it gives somebody else an opportunity for the rebound. And so I feel like there's always a scoring opportunity. You definitely get the feeling that uh, if it doesn't go in, it's going to be a rebound and we're going to get some sort of chance out of this. And so, you know, the first one, you're like, okay, that was great. Oh, what a free kick hammer. The second one, you're like, oh, wow, he's really good on it. It's history. Laura Simon, the first goal in Bank of California Stadium history. And now the third one. And it's in. He does it again. You're like, oh, my God, this is happening on a consistent level. And like a Steph Curry or somebody that takes these ridiculous shots, um, you feel like it's going to go in every time. And uh, we're, we're fortunate that he is able to, to score these, and it's just the, uh, you know, icing on the cake. Oh, what a blast from Laurent Simon! The carbon copy for his third goal of the season! Nobody, at least I didn't, and maybe the club didn't know that he had this free kick ability um, going into this season, but it's definitely emerged as something that is uh, one of his greatest attributes and something that we're riding on right now, and he continues to have success, and it's great for us. Set pieces, free kicks. Did you ever get, when your Middlesbrough days, get to line up a free kick? I was never on free kicks. I took one penalty and unfortunately <laughs> missed it. So set pieces are not one of my strongest parts of my game. Robbie Musto, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you missed out, shame on you. Join me in the booth as my plus one for the game against Columbus. You'll do it again here against Can't Philadelphia wait. Union. Can't wait. Love that. Really tell the people what a thrill it is to work with me. Well, not so much about that, but no, it what about is the great. Game? It's great. No, the it's game, great to work with the you. The stadium's great, and the commentary is easy. We have a brilliant position, one of the best I've ever commentated on, really, in terms of the stadium where we are. The football's been great. Bob Bradley's been really good with us as well, off the field. So I can't wait to do it again on Saturday. All right, what are your expectations for this weekend against uh, well, the Union? We had well, a chance to talk to Bob and see you. Yeah, I mean, they have to be confident. Yeah. The way that they played against Crew, with the goals, with the solid defensive nature of the performance and the control, they should absolutely win this game. Confidence is sky high. Dio scoring goals up front. They should win the game. All right, thank you very much, Robbie. We'll see you on Saturday, and we'll see you on Saturday at Bank of California Stadium. And if you haven't had a chance to sit in the North End, here's what you're missing. We'll see you next week on Inside LAFC. You know, if you watched the LAFC game, the first thing you would have noticed is the 3252 stand here on the north wall. This is where they sit. As you can see, it's got the railings. This is standing room only. You're here to stand, you're here to enjoy the game, you're here to cheer, and you get a great view. All right, you want to sit down a bit? You want? I can't sit. Look, it's locked in there. Where do you go from there? Nowhere. You do this. Look, we're up in the press box where you could be sitting on the east to west side of the stadium. You cannot be affected. You do not want to come here and sit here with these guys. It is amazing. They're here early. They're tailgating. They create this atmosphere. They are what this club is all about. Yeah.